Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Who is the man in boxing who has it all? In my opinion, the answer is always the heavyweight champion of the world. Right? Life's unfair. Some things are just more valuable than others. Some titles are just bigger than others. Now you can have great fighters throughout the sport. You can have all-time greats with belts in multiple weight classes. Right? But all titles are not the same. Right? The biggest title in the sport in my opinion and we can argue it right let me hear your comments in the comment section but the biggest title in the sport of boxing is the heavyweight championship right to me there's the heavyweight champion and then there's everyone else right just looking at individual sports in my opinion, there really is only one other title in individual sports that is remotely on par with the heavyweight champion of the world. And that title is the world's fastest man. Right? I can't think of another designation that carries as much weight. Right? From time to time, you'll have a charismatic number one ranking, you know, number one ranked person in tennis, right? I remember when Roger Federer ruled the rules, right? Serena Williams is, quite frankly, one of the most dominant athletes ever, right? But I'll say this. If I go down the street to the local pub and I start talking tennis, a lot of people are going to have a lot of glazed looks on their face, Right? If Roger Federer walks in the bar or Novak Djokovic, right, whoever, um, a lot of people won't turn around. But if you're sitting at the bar with your back to the entrance and the door opens and someone says, there's the heavyweight champion of the world, people are going to look. Now, I don't know a lot of celebrities. I don't. Right? I'm not a celebrity stalker. I got my own life to live. Right? Um, you know, I'm the person who is more fixated on the songwriter than the singer. Right? I'm someone who's more interested in who created the vision, not the person doing karaoke with that vision. Right? Now, I was in a uh, club years ago, more than 20 years ago, with my crew. We were just hanging out. And someone came over and said, hey, Janet Jackson's in the other room. And at the time, Janet was big. And we were all, hey, okay, looks good, you know. Um, I had more important things to do, like finish my drink, right? A few feet from me in the club was a guy who was huge at the time, Wesley Snipes, right? I actually spoke with Wesley for about, oh, 30 seconds, right? Um, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, that's nice. Wesley Snipes, cool. Then someone said, Mike Tyson's in the other room. I'm telling you, without prompting, my entire crew left where we were and went to the other room. And sure enough, there was Mike Tyson, then on top of the world. This is before Buster and all this other stuff. There's Mike Tyson, right? And I'm telling you that it was on par with seeing the Pope. Right To see a guy widely regarded as the heavyweight champion right, is a jaw-dropping experience. Now, let me just say this. Right? You have a fight coming up between the heavyweight champion, Vladimir Klitschko, and Brian Jennings. Now, an old client of mine who has many, many, many advisors is part of Brian Jennings' team. 
and he and I talk boxing from time to time. Not that frequently, but from time to time, we'll be texting each other and stuff like that. Just comparing notes, just comparing takes. Now, what I can tell you without a doubt, right, is that the Brian Jennings team views this fight as a real opportunity, right? It's not about the money, folks. Brian Jennings' team firmly believes that Brian Jennings has a real chance at winning this fight, right? No ands, ifs, or buts about it. They feel that if their guy comes in the ring ready, he has a real chance, right? Let's talk about that chance. I agree with them. I think Jennings has a real chance in this fight, but understand I'm more of a gambler than anything else. So I believe it's more than likely that Klitschko wins this fight, right? I don't view this fight like I view a Klitschko Tyson Fury fight where I would think in that fight, Fury has a better than 50% chance of winning that fight. This fight's a little bit different. This fight is the fight where Brian Jennings is going to have to come out and fight the fight of his life, a near-perfect fight to dethrone the champion, right? One of my rules in life is to always bet against perfection. Right? Sure, there are times where someone is going to run a 10-6 in the 100 meters. But I'm not going to bank on that. Right? You know, there can be a sprinter who's up and down, who might have a chance at beating Usain Bolt. I'm not taking him in the Olympic finals against Usain Bolt. Right? So, I expect the heavyweight champion in New York City to successfully defend his crown. But, I'm going to hedge the play. And it'll shock some people. I'm going to hedge the play with Brian Jennings by KO. Let's talk about the champ, Vladimir Klitschko. In my opinion, Klitschko is vulnerable. And the reason he's vulnerable is he's predictable. Right now, he's been lifting his game of late. Right, but understand he's a rehearsed fighter, he's not a natural fighter. Right, he's not his older brother, Vitaly Klitschko. Right, he's the opposite of someone like Salvador Sanchez, if you want to go back in boxing history, who just intuitively knew how to be on the ropes, be in the middle of the ring, who could ad lib. He's not that guy. Right? He's a rehearsed guy who needs to do things in steps. Right? So, he has a great jab. It's one of the sport's best jabs. The number one thing that you have to do against Vladimir Klitschko is to avoid that jab. Right? You have to. If you don't avoid that jab, the rest of the conversation is irrelevant. You're going to lose. Everything keys off the jab. Vladimir Klitschko has a great jab. You've got to find a way to get out of its way. Let's talk about the fights where people did. The meaningful recent defenses that Vladimir Klitschko has had. I'm not going to go back to Ross Purity. I'm not going to go back to Lehman Brewster. Right? Those are earlier incarnations of Vladimir Klitschko. Let's stick in the modern time. The first Tony Thompson fight, which I keep mentioning here online, Thompson is a southpaw. Vladimir Klitschko can't land his jab on Tony Thompson. The film's up on YouTube, folks. Take a look at it. He can't. He's in trouble against Tony Thompson. Right? Now, you had some members of Vladimir's fan club, it seems, right? Just my opinion. I'm not making a statement of fact. Don't sue me. Who were judging the fight, right? The judges seem to be favoring the champ. 
right? Don't go by their scorecards. Go by your eyes. Vladimir Klitschko was in serious trouble against an opponent who didn't even have his mobility because Tony Thompson was in the ring with a bad leg, right? Klitschko couldn't land his jab. He had problems that first fight, right? Now, Tyson Fury can fight out of a southpaw stance. He's seamless with it. Right? My point to you, though, is a righty like Brian Jennings needs to look at that film and look at the angles in that film. Right? The point is, Brian Jennings' top priority has to be avoiding Klitschko's jab. It's a must. Right? So the first Tony Thompson fight is interesting. A fight critics seem to have lambasted, but which deserves another inspection, is his fight against David Hay. Now I know David Hay has a bad toe, right, during the fight. I agree David Hay is low volume during the fight. But that's a curious fight because David Hay is operating outside of the pocket. Now let's let's define the pocket here. Let's say I'm Vladimir Klitschko. Just imagine 180 degrees around me. Think of it like you would think of an NFL quarterback in the pocket. Right? We're talking about the area right in front of Vladimir Klitschko. Right? An arm's length away. David Hay on an ambush style is outside of the pocket for much of his fight against Vladimir Klitschko. He's more than an arm's length away. Now what's interesting is Vladimir Klitschko has a huge problem cutting off the ring on David Hay. As I said, Klitschko, who is a great athlete, who does have ring coverage, who can throw punches from halfway across the ring, He's too tentative to aggressively pursue an opponent. So, bad toe and all. David Hay goes 12 rounds. David Hay is relatively unmarked at the end of that fight. There's no busted up eye. He's not barely making it to the finish line. No, David Hay goes 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko. Right? You need to question Klitschko's foot speed if you're able to avoid his jab. Right? I would encourage everyone to revisit the David Hay fight. Keep in mind, you can go 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko and be unscathed, not be close to getting knocked out. We've seen it. It's that David Hay fight. Right? I'm not talking about the Marius Wok fight and all these other shootouts where the other guy is lucky to last several rounds with Klitschko. No, I'm talking about a fight where a guy goes 12 rounds with Klitschko and doesn't get meaningfully hurt. Right? Klitschko doesn't like movement. Right? Klitschko can't handle a guy who is outside the pocket. Right? Now, let me say this. The Alexander Povetkin fight. Povetkin also goes 12 rounds. Klitschko leans down on the back of Povetkin's neck and is holding Povetkin. What I want people to do, knowing that Povetkin is coming inside constantly, trying to bum rush um, Klitschko, is revisit that fight and look at the body punching by Vladimir Klitschko. Folks, you understand when you get inside on Vladimir Klitschko, his strategy is to hold you. Right? That's his strategy. It's not to fight small, lower a shoulder, and then start hitting you with body punches. Right? Put another way, let's compare and contrast Klitschko to James DeGale. Right? You'll notice in the Gale fights. A guy comes in on the gale, he immediately lowers the shoulder. The gale immediately gets small. You'll notice the gale starts winging body shots, right, while maintaining his defense. 
That's not Vladimir Klitschko. You get too close to Klitschko, the Povetkin fight taught us he's going to try to grab you. Right? He's not comfortable throwing body shots when you're up on him and the pace is frenetic. So let's talk about Brian Jennings. Right? I thought Povetkin let an opportunity slip. We saw in the Martin Murray, Janady Golovkin fight. I thought it was a great moment in that fight. Martin Murray trying to clinch Janady Golovkin. Right? Murray's the hurt fighter. Golovkin's the hunter. Right? Martin Murray tries to grab Janady Golovkin. Now, many fighters would let him hold on. Because the idea is, I'm winning the round. Look who's holding on to who. Look who's on top. Right? Judges, you see he's grabbing me to survive. Give me the round. But you and I know Golovkin's not about winning decisions. Golovkin is a guy who, as they say in the trade, closes the show. Right? So Martin Murray comes forward to grab Golovkin. And Golovkin has a hand up. Golovkin doesn't want to be grabbed. Golovkin doesn't want to know Martin Murray that personally. Right? Golovkin wants to keep his hands free. He wants the action to continue. Right? The idea is you need to grab something. It's not going to be me. You're in trouble. Right? Now against Klitschko, other than avoiding the jab, and the left hook, right? We know that left hook's lethal. Just ask Kubrat Pulev, right? Just ask Ray Austin, right? Other than avoid the jab and the left hook, you have to avoid being clinched, don't you? In other words, when you're up close and he tries to grab you, you have to do a Golovkin because we know Vladimir Klitschko likes to go at a measured pace. He wants to be in second and third gear. He doesn't want to be in fourth gear. You need to bring the fight to fourth gear. So, let's talk angles, because it's all angles. Right? If I'm Vladimir Klitschko and I'm looking at you, and you understand that a jab is my bread and butter, so you can't be in front of me, right? You can't be 12 o'clock. You understand I have a left hook. You can't be 10 o'clock, right? You understand I have a straight right, right? Again, you can't be 12 o'clock in front of me, right? Isn't the angle with Vladimir Klitschko 2 o'clock, right? When's the last time you saw Vladimir Klitschko land a great right hook on a guy? Right? The fight I want people to look at, and you'll have to fool around with the angles, because Tony Thompson's a southpaw, is the Carlos Tackum-Tony Thompson fight. Right? Tackum beats Tony Thompson. Tony can't land his jab. But yet, Packham is repeatedly close enough to Tony Thompson to batter him. Right? Tackham finds an angle where Tony can't land his jab and can't deal with him at all. Right? Tackham's throwing volume. Tackham is riddling Tony Thompson. Tony has no clue what to do. That fight's up on YouTube. Another great fight to look at, just in terms of angles and hand speed, is Tackham's loss to Alexander Povetkin. Now, I know it's going to sound crazy. I'll say this. Tackham would have had a better chance against Vladimir Klitschko than he did fighting Alexander Povetkin. Right? I believe the key to beating Vladimir Klitschko is you need to come in First, you have to avoid his jab. 
You have to avoid his left hand altogether, folks. You need to avoid that left hook. Right? So you need to be over here on the right side. But you need to be moving like David Hay on this side. Right? In other words, you need to move enough where you're on the outskirts of the pocket. Right? In other words, you're far enough away where Klitschko can't grab you. You're not in front of him where he can lean on you. You have to make him turn to grab you. You need to be prepared to have an elbow up. Hey, this is the rough and tumble world of fighting. Right? You need to make it look like you're not elbowing him. But you need to make sure you have an arm bar up. So he can't grab you. And you need to be throwing punches from the side. Like Carlos Tackham does the entire Tony Thompson fight. That's the fight to look at. Right? So Brian Jennings has to come in. He cannot start this fight like he started the Mike Perez fight. Right? He cannot be low volume. Brian a tie goes to the champ. You have to take the title. Right? A lot of people don't know who you are. You don't have the crowd support to fight a photo finish fight against an established champion and be awarded the belt. Right? So Jennings, who throws combinations, who is fluid, who has long arms, he has to practice the shots that Carlos Tackham landed on Tony Thompson. He has to be off at the side. He has to throw volume. When Klitschko goes to grab him, he has to say, uh-uh, this fight's not a second gear fight. This is a fourth gear fight. You're not going to lean on me. You know, Jennings is the shorter fighter. He can't have Klitschko tying him up. Right? He has to look at old Mike McCallum films. He has to look at Janady Golovkin's recent match. To see guys who didn't want to be tied up, right? Has to be at 2 o'clock, in my opinion, on Vladimir Klitschko, and he has to be throwing volume, right? He has to make his combination punching an issue because Klitschko is not a combination puncher, right? So like Tackham against Tony Thompson, he has to be letting his hands go. Right? What happens in a situation like that, where you deconstruct the other guy's construct, is the other guy starts to panic. Right? If you get Vladimir Klitschko out of his comfort zone, then you'll find a fighter who's hittable. Right? That first Lehman Brewster fight, the one I said I wouldn't mention. Right? In my opinion, Vladimir Klitschko has a panic attack in the ring. The second Tony Thompson fight. Vladimir Klitschko fights in his construct the first round and loses the first round. It's only when he gets out of his construct and starts going like this. I'm not kidding. Literally, his hands are open and he's going like this, baiting Thompson. A guy who he had already knocked out in the first fight. A guy who knew his power. Right? It's only then that he has success. Brian Jennings has to get him to that stage. He has to force Klitschko out of his construct where Klitschko then starts winging it. Right? If Klitschko starts winging it, understand this is a guy who has been stopped multiple times. We forget about the Corey Sanders fight. You can drop Vladimir Klitschko. You just have to get him out of his construct. Now, Brian Jennings is a guy who likes to start cautiously himself. That Mike Perez fight is exhibit number one. He likes to let several rounds pass before he raises room temperature. He has to get that out of his head. He needs to set the tone early. Right? He cannot give away the first two or three rounds to Vladimir Klitschko and then think he has a chance of winning the fight. Right? So he needs to come out. He needs to not be clinchable. 
He needs to not be at 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock. He can't be in the way of the straight left or the left hook. He has to be over off at the side, moving too much to get hit with the jab, too far away to be clinched, but close enough to be throwing volume power shots. That's the other thing, too. Don't waste a lot of time with the jab. Throw power shots on Vladimir Klitschko. Right? And, let me add, he needs to fight low. Because he has a guy who doesn't like to go to the body already. Right? If you fight tall like Kubrat Pulev, you get stopped. Well, anyway, that's how I see the fight. I'm not even sure if it's bettable. That depends on the odds the casino is giving you on Brian Jennings by KO. Right? But I expect Vladimir Klitschko to win this fight. Could be by KO. Could be by decision. But I'll say this. If Brian Jennings fights the perfect fight, he has a shot at a stoppage. But he's going to have to fight a fight I haven't seen him fight to date. The reason why I'm giving him an outside chance here is because he has the hand speed. Because he has the arm length. Because he throws combinations. Because he is athletic. Right? But he's going to have to avoid being pinned on the ropes. He's going to have to avoid being clinched. He's going to have to avoid that jab. So he's going to have to work it so that he's always able to throw punches and move without getting clinched. Right? On Klitschko's right side. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.